Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin and logarithmic regression of the price into the unknown part two. You guys liked the last video, so I wanted to do a follow up, and we're going to measure things slightly different in this video. So, if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this chart just simply shows the regression of, uh, or it shows logarithmic regression curves overlaid over the price of Bitcoin. Now, the first thing I, I really want to say is that all of this should be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, we will be doing some very dubious extrapolations, but I, I think we're going to be here for a while for the market cycle. So might as well buckle up and, and have some fun um, uh, making some dubious projections along the way. So in the last video, we looked at projecting bottom to bottoms and, and top to tops. In this video, we're actually gonna be looking at bottom to tops and, and top to bottoms. So uh, that's what we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and look at. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the approximate prices of Bitcoin at these various times to try to identify any, any trends from bottom to top first. So we note that from this bottom at 201 or so, up to 1184 was a multiple of approximately 589x, a modest 589x. Then we had a modest 122x from the bottom in 2015 up to the top in 2017. Okay, so one of the things we can note is the ratio between these is 0 0.207. Now, of course, the ratio between the next two will also not be very likely not be 0.207, but what if it were? If it were 0.207, then that would put the next peak at 25x, so just taking the, the multiple from 589 to get to 122 and projecting that same multiple to the next cycle, and a 25x from the bottom would put Bitcoin peaking at approximately $80,000. $252, uh, give or take a few dollars, right? What's a few bucks among friends? And then we say, well, uh, does this make sense? But the first thing we can do too is, is we can also look at, at measuring from uh, from peak to bottom. I mean, it's essentially, you know, whether we're measuring from, from bottom to peak, peak to bottom. Now we're, we're just looking at the severity of a theoretical future bear market. One of the things we note is that from this peak to this bottom, it was uh, approximately 0.06, so about a 94% loss. The next one was 0.14, or an 86% loss. The next one was 0.16, or an 84% loss. So if we were to continue to project this out, what number do we use? Because this pattern here, going from 0.06 to 0.14, it's quite the jump, and then this one not so much. So I just randomly chose 0.17. We're going to dive into this a little bit more, but I just for now I just chose 0.17, uh, and and that would indicate if the peak were at eighty thousand dollars, it would take us back down to thirteen thousand six forty two. Now I should first say I do not think this will be the peak, and I do not think this will be the bottom, as we've noted before. All all future bottoms have been higher than the peak from two cycles before. So if you look at this bottom at 162, it was higher than the peak two cycles before. This bottom was higher than the peak two cycles before. I would expect this bottom will be higher than the peak two cycles before, which would be 19,881. So I, I certainly do not think that after the next peak, we will go all the way back down to 13,642 just to give you guys an idea. Now, one thing we can talk about is, well, what if we change up the multiple? Um, and let's say, let's make this 0.3, just for the hell of it, and, and say this is 0.25, because we made a pretty big jump here, not so much here, what if we make another big jump? Then this will put the peak at 117,000, and then the theoretical bottom at 29,000. Now, one of the things that you might wonder, like, why would I project this up so much? I do think that macro volatility of Bitcoin is decreasing. And it's not what I think, it's it's what the data suggests. And if you take a look at the data, this this is just simply taking on an annualized basis, the maximum price of Bitcoin minus the minimum divided by the minimum times 100 to get it you know easily into a percent that, that people can generally understand. If we project this out over a couple decades or three decades or so, 
it you know it shows that volatility as measured on on this annualized basis at least in reference to the maximum and minimum price of bitcoin in that year it is reducing right it is reducing over the macro scale therefore i would expect i mean maybe something like this i don't really know but i would expect volatility would i mean we know it's reducing from the upside um you know we're, we're, we're seeing smaller and smaller peaks as measured from the bottom However, it also likely means that future bear markets will not be as intense as past ones. And, and what I mean when I, when I say that is, I, I don't think that we're going to continuously see 85, 90% drops from the peak. I, I think that's gonna slowly be curtailed over time, just in the same manner that we could expect a slightly diminished ROI. Maybe not, maybe more than just slightly. Um, diminished ROI from each market cycle bottom as compared to the to the, to the last cycle, and then that one's lower than the cycle before that, and then that one's lower than the cycle before that. So we expect diminishing returns as measured from bottom to peak. We also would probably expect the peak, um, peak to bottom, to also be less severe. And the reason why this market cycle, in my opinion, could be special, is because I think the next bear market will actually happen during um during a halving and i know that might not um uh resonate with a lot of people if especially if if you think that the, the price is going to peak at the end of 2021 and there's a chance you could be right there's a chance i could be wrong right i mean we'll, we'll see what happens um but if it does take longer to get to the next theoretical peak then it could push the bear market into the next halving and therefore the next halving instead of catalyzing a new bull market it could help curtail the effects of the bear market and make it so that our our, our measurement or our losses from peak to bottom are not quite as severe this is what i think will happen again i could be wrong um it, it's happened before <laughs> so uh, one of the and, and, and you might wonder you know like why do i say this right why do i say this well we could also say with the having it could make this even less severe like i mean we could make a huge jump maybe instead of 0.25 it's 0.35 from the peak and then our, our bottom is at forty one thousand dollars which to me actually would make a lot of sense considering that that's what i would that's where the fair value of bitcoin would be at the time as measured by the logarithmic regression fit to quote unquote non-bubble prices of bitcoin but if you're wondering about about um like why i always push lengthening cycles it's just i mean here you can measure from from the bottom of each cycle to the peak bottom to peak bottom to peak the first one was 315 days the second one was 742 days the third one was 1064 days i'm essentially just projecting it out and, and saying you know what um, i'm going to continue to extrapolate this it may be wrong right it could be wrong there's a chance it could peak earlier um as i've, I've often said I, I think the peak could come as early as the end of 2022 it could come as late as 2024. I, I, I've often said I think it will likely come in, in 2023. I don't think this market cycle is going to be remembered by an, a, a rush of institutional money in 2021 for them to just come crashing down at the end of it. I think it's going to be a slower buildup over, over several years, and it's going to be more and more institutions coming to the table, more and more retail coming to the table, and then the effects of the next bear market won't be quite as severe, more people are going to know about Bitcoin. Um, and you can already see, even without halvings in past bear markets, the the um, extent of the bear market in terms of it dropping from its its peak has, has reduced down. So if it does reduce down, if it does correct back down in a, in a bear market close to the next halving, then this could help uh, curb the effects of the next halving even more. And this is good for Bitcoin, right? I mean, having 80, 85% drops from the peak, 90% drops from the peak uh, is not very attractive from, from most investors' point of view because most people that are new to the space, they get in at a peak, which is the worst time to get in, and then they live through the bear market. And, and so hopefully in the future, people who are buying at the peak might not have to live through quite as drastic of a bear market and i think that will that will likely happen so um hopefully that explains it I, again no one really knows what's going to happen we're just somewhat projecting and extrapolating somewhat dubiously several different trends it could play out it could not play out i think the next peak will be somewhere around six figures between 100 to 200 thousand dollars if i had to guess i would say closer to 100 thousand 
120, 140, then 200,000, I certainly don't think it's gonna be going up to a million dollars this market cycle. And I think that the data has made that evidently clear. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. And if you wanna join the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com, you can and you'll get access to weekly reports, weekly videos, an alerts channel on Telegram, a private Telegram chat room, a risk dashboard, and also um, I've put these regression lines into, into TradingView and you'll be able to access that as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. Please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.